none other than the great Chris Kenny, also from the Australian, and the wonderful Bronwyn Bishop, our carryover champ, as always, and the queen of awesomeness. Um, just quickly before we do anything else, Chris, are you amused by the idea that, that both simultaneously the New South Wales and Queensland governments can predict how many people will break the law and assume more people will break the law next year? Yeah, they love it because they just set up the traps for us, don't they? I mean, these budgets were very, very depressing today, Paul, because we've got an inflation problem in this country. They just spend, spend, spend. It's all politics. In, in, uh, in Queensland, they're whacking new tax on the coal industry. In New South Wales, where they demonise coal now, they're raking in $4 billion from the same industry. I just, uh, I just think that governance, good governance in this country seems to have disappeared. Nobody cares about the fundamentals. Uh, the way to lower taxes is to reduce your spending, to shrink government, get back to the basics. They're all just endlessly expanding government, whether it's fines on people or whether it's uh, handing out new uh, cash allowances to people for this, that and the other. We have just both sides of politics in this country now endlessly expanding government, which just means we all pay more and it's all going to come crashing down like a house of cards in the future. Well, and of course, Bronwyn, um, let's also talk about the stamp duty situation that we talked about before. This is a decision to increase permanent land tax because, of course, the value of your land will go up over the five years, the 10 years, the 15 years, the 20 years, all right? Now, I should point out, according to the ABS, the average home ownership in Australia is about 11 years, but that's average because, of course, there are investors that are coming and going every couple of years. But most people, and certainly most people watching us, have an expectation that when eventually you get to the forever house, it's forever, and once you've paid off the mortgage, all you have to pay is council rates. Exactly. And what they're doing is uh, wanting that forever home to pay a forever tax. Correct. A one-off stamp duty is paid at a point of time when the value of the land is fixed, uh, but under this system, and how on earth you could have somebody, somebody who says they're a, a Liberal government introducing a new tax... Mm. It, of course, reminds me, Mr Perrottet's adviser and confidant is Paul Keating, who, of course, was the master of giving us new taxes. So it worries the living daylights out of me that we can have a, a treasurer like Matt Keane, who is so far left, I don't think he can spell liberal. <laughs> uh, he, he only he's needs serious. the first letter. <laughs> well, the, the, seriously, when, when I listen to that budget come down today and more spending... This pretense about dealing with the cost of living is just so false mm. because the size of your wage, what matters is what you can buy with it. OK, now, these poor people who have been given a 5.2% increase in their wage because of the slip of the tongue that Mr Albanese made, they think that's terrific, and it is terrific. But what will happen is the pressures that have been to bear, plus all these other taxes, both from New South Wales and from Queensland, will force it up. They could well find themselves where the increased money will buy them less. Correct. And that's the problem with inflation and that's the problem with wage push chasing inflation chasing each other's tail. Well, again, uh, you know, they're all trying to outdo themselves uh, to stand out in a crowd. One more time, Lydia Thorpe, read the Australian flag. Roll it again. What we have to understand, though, is what the Australian flag represents. And it represents a colonial invasion. For First Nations people, that flag is, obs is an obscenity. I prefer Matt Canavan's worldview. I actually don't believe that uh, a majority of even Greens voters would support Adam Bant's stance here uh, that disrespects Australia, disrespects our flag. And I always uh, do my interviews um, in front of the flag. In fact, like Donald Trump, mate, I, I'm, I like to hug the flag. I just like to hug it and, and uh, love this country so much, mate. I love that bloke. Um, Chris, the thing is, is that we could spend a lot of time talking about what they want to talk about, which is the specificity of their view about how Australia um, became what it did and what it does today, but it actually speaks to a bigger thing. They are all about undoing the modernity of Australia. They are all about undoing the very things that have advantaged every one of their MPs. 
they don't like Australia. They're against our institutions. They're against what this wonderful country has uh, has become. Our, our Indigenous heritage, our British institutions, our multicultural project. They hate all that. We love all that. Now, I used to have a quilt cover that was the Eureka flag, so I used to cuddle up in the Eureka flag every night, <laughs> <laughs> like Matt Canavan. But uh, what a close. But uh, Lydia thought that. Lydia Thorpe doesn't even understand history. You know, she talks about it, the Australian flag as somehow representing colonial invasion. There was no such thing as an Australian flag when England settled Australia. The Australian flag came something like 120, 130 years later. She just doesn't know what she's talking about. She's trying to demonise Australia. And uh, you know, Paul, uh, as all our viewers do, that, that I'm full on, fully on board, as we all are, with getting rid of Indigenous uh, disadvantage and getting rid of any Absolutely. injustice for the great Indigenous Australians in this country. But, you, you know, you got to just send a price coming on later in the program. I mean, you talk about uh, what rights people have in this country and, and, and the way that uh, Mabo has been delivered and the weak uh, land rights decisions. This has all come about through British institutions. The, the rights and the privileges and the wonderful country we have now are there and available and used and are beneficial to Indigenous Australians as, as well as to all the migrants and everyone else. I mean, and people like Lydia Thorpe just want to run all this down. I mean, you named for me a better country on the planet of this earth and one that recognises uh, some of the problems of the past and tries to right them. But put all that together, all of our ancient history and modern history, and what are we today? We're one of the most just, fair, tolerant, equal countries in the world, always striving to be better. And people like Adam Band and Lydia Thorpe just hate on us. Yeah, I mean, Bronwyn, again, look, I'm happy if they don't want to take their places in the parliament because they're triggered by the giant flag above them. Labor won't be able to get anything passed because, mm. of course, they need all the Greens plus uh, plus old mate Pocock to get anything done. Well, I've been saying, I don't know for how long, that really the Greens just hate Australia. Mm. And all the things that Chris said just then are absolutely correct. They want to see it torn down. This is what socialists do. They destroy the existing society. If you take it to its absolute extreme, you end up with a Pol Pot who uh, killed anyone who uh, didn't agree with them or had any uh, education that remembered their past, that remembered the sort of society they had. So the Greens simply... Want, they don't want to see the nation-state of Australia. They want to see international government. Correct. The socialist international regime of which they will be a part and will order your life and my life and Chris's life and tell you what to do and what you may and may not do. That's their mm. idea. And don't forget, the other aim of the Greens is to reduce the number of humans on the planet. Now, if you have to starve them to death or get rid of them any other way, that's their absolute aim. Well, and don't forget one of the other people that have got representation, I think, in the New South Wales and the Victorian Parliament is the Animal Justice Party. Go on to their own website, read their own policies, and they believe in population limitation uh, in their views. Imagine literally government telling you how many kids you could have. Oh, that's right, they did that in China, didn't Correct. they? For a brother? and we had baby girls dying in the gutter. Yeah, long period of time. All right, let's talk about the energy nonsense. As you remember, this was the great Matt Keane telling everyone everything's OK, just don't wash your dishes last week. What we want to see is if there is an opportunity for people to reduce their energy usage, so perhaps not using the dishwasher until you go to bed, that would help. Yeah, whatever. It's the same state that one day uh, will eventually discover the ability to have power going 24... Oh, that's right, it already happened. You know, the same state that hosted the Olympic Games in the year 2000. We're almost a quarter of the way into the 21st century and that's the garbage people are putting up with. And there'll be more of it. Here's Daniel Andrews. Our position has consistently been that the priority should be given to and preference should be given to renewable energy. Peter Dutton nails the normal middle ground. Uh, I think we should be doing whatever we can to increase the use of renewables, but doing it in a way that doesn't turn the lights off. But what about today? Victoria's Greens are going to introduce something into the Parliament, a way to try and make uh, get a bit of attention before the next uh, state election in November, one that Andrews will probably uh, win handsomely. Why? I don't know. But that there should be no more gas connections anywhere in uh, Victoria. There are local councils that are already doing this. Again, the idea that the particularly cold four seasons in one day Victoria is the place that should turn gas to the home off first, Chris, gives us an idea again about the tip of the spear. And the problem with the Greens is what we roll our hours at today ends up becoming Labor policy in five to ten years' time. 
Mate, this is the great worry. Labor can't do anything in the Senate without the Greens. The Greens, as nutty and as Australia-hating as they are, are going to have enormous sway over Labor, and the left wing of the Labor Party tend to agree with them anyway. Look, it can't be any more simple or depressing than this, right? A country that has now spent the last two decades subsidising renewable energy with the explicit aim of that driving out fossil fuel energy has now realised that we've done too much of that subsidies and, and, and we've driven out too much fossil fuel energy that now we need to subsidise the fossil fuel energy so that it's there when we need it. I mean, that's how nutty this is. And at the same time, we've made power more expensive and more unreliable. And the sum effect of all that for the environment, remember, this is all driven by global warming action and the need to do something for the environment. The sum effect of all our actions, all our self-harm is zero on the environment because global emissions have continued to rise steeply. So this is madness and self-harm on a grand scale. And this is the opportunity for Peter Dutton to cut through with sensible, objective, normal policy focused on energy affordability and availability. And he can win the next election on that because it's going to get a lot worse than the last couple of weeks over the next few years. Bronwyn, you get the last word. Well, very simply, there is no proper electricity market or energy market, but more particularly... Mm, it's not a market. It's not a market, but more particularly, what really makes me angry is that Conservative governments for the last 10 years that existed, from Tony Abbott to, to Mr Morrison, had the opportunity to stop subsidising so-called renewables and put an end to this farce that it's supposed to be cheap. Mm. If that had happened and a market had really worked, you would have coal and gas competing and you would get a good balance in the market. The reality is that up to 80% of everything we use that keeps our lights on, keeps our bath water hot, that gives us a hot cup of tea, whatever, comes from fossil fuel. It is here to stay. You see in Europe, they're reopening their coal-fired power stations. China uses our coal and our iron ore to make battleships with which they want to, co to conquer us. Yep. They want us as the vassal state. <laughs> and we are sitting here talking about, oh, can't have gas in Victoria. It is so makes me so angry that we had the opportunity to do something and did nothing. I'm with you. Thank you very much, lad, lady. Look forward to uh, your contributions, both uh, every day at 5 o'clock and whenever we can get you on the telly, Bronwyn. Thank you so much.